What's up everyone? John Renger from Techno Buffalo here and today we got an unboxing of the latest LTE packing device from Sprint. This is the Photon 4G. If you've been yearning, aching and wanting a physical keyboard on an LTE device on Sprint, this is going to be the guy I want to check out. Let's go ahead and see what this phone looks like. It's in a tiny, tiny little package. So here we've got the Photon Q in its eco-friendly box, letting you know it's got a 4.3 inch color boost display. It's got LTE speeds, assuming you are in one of the LTE networks, which Sprint is expanding. Uh, 8 megapixel camera and package is 100% recyclable. So that's good. Tiny box. Uh, let's go ahead and open her up. We'll run through all the specs and all that kind of goodness. Here is the Photon Q. Push that off to the side for just a moment. Nicely put it down. I've gotten bashed in the comments for throwing the devices, so I will gingerly place that off to the side. Uh, we've got an actual getting started guide for getting started. Sprint usually includes a recycle bag in their uh, packages too, which is always nice. Fun to recycle your old phones. We've got a wall charger and we've got a micro USB cord. And that's it in this box. So let me go ahead and power this guy on and we can talk about all of its specs. All right, so the phone is booting up. Let me tell you what the Photon Q is packing under its hood. So it is available now on Sprint for 199 bucks with a two year contract. But of course, check online or check the stores because that price always changes. Uh, it is shipping with ice cream sandwich. That's 4.0.4 uh, on board, but hopefully it'll see 4.1 at some point in the future. Uh, from a dimension standpoint, we've got 4.98 inches got 2.6 inches and we've got 0.54 inches and you just saw why it's a little bit on the fatter side it's because it is rocking a full-on keyboard we'll talk about this keyboard in just a minute but for those of you that really like actual clickety clackety buttons you're going to be quite happy uh, with the Photon Q uh, from a weight standpoint, it's no porker, but it's not super slender and thin either. Uh, weighs six ounces. Uh, the screen that you're looking at is actually a very pretty uh, 4.3 inch display, which is now standard. Remember when 4.3 inches seemed like such a huge size for a phone, and now it almost seems small? Goes to show you how far we've come in the phone world. Uh, resolution of 540 by 960, so it's obviously 540 by 960 right there. It's a TFT LCD display with color boost. And I will say, the screen looks beautiful. Uh, I've seen these Motorola displays in the past, they always look really nice. It doesn't always translate on camera to your computer when you're watching this, uh, but it does look beautiful in person. Uh, it's got a pretty beefy embedded, so non-removable, 1,785 milliamp hour battery living somewhere beneath this plastic back. Uh, it's being powered by a 1.5 gigahertz dual core chip. It's got a gig of RAM, uh, eight gigs internal storage, but expandable with micro SD, so yay. On the back, we've got a camera. It actually labels it for me, it makes my life really easy. Eight megapixel camera uh, that can shoot 1080p video. And of course it's got an LED flash. On the front, not labeled for me, uh, but it is a 1.3 megapixel camera uh, that can shoot 720p video. Uh, it is running Sprint's LTE network, which unfortunately here in Southern California, we do not have. Uh, we are on their legacy uh, 3G network, but presumably we'll get 4G here and that will light up and I'll be super excited. Uh, it's got Bluetooth and it does have NFC. This is a world phone, so you can take it anywhere you wanna go. Uh, it's got smart actions which is something very cool that uh, Motorola has. Uh, lets you do some neat things with your devices. So you can set it to uh, have certain reminders or do certain actions when you get home or in areas. It can use GPS, essentially fence you in an area. As soon as you leave or enter that um, particular destination, uh, it will um, do stuff for you. Also got these really cool widgets. You look at the bottom here, phone and people uh, and text, have little arrows next to them. If you slide that up, you get certain actions you can do. So you can add a favorite right there just by sliding that, having actually open up the application and go in and select it. Uh, it's a pretty handy little feature there. And also handy, this guy comes with an unlocked bootloader. So those of you that have been eyeing up uh, CM10 or one of the variants, uh, you're gonna be quite happy to know that you can do so very easily on this device. So let's talk about this guy. Uh, it's got a full QWERTY keyboard. It's becoming more and more of a rarity nowadays. Uh, keys have a decent amount of feedback and throw. They feel very clicky, which if you've ever used a physical keyboard, it's always nice to have an actual clicky kind of feel. Uh, I've got an actual row for numbers here, and as is the case with most sliding keyboards in this manner, uh, the top row can sometimes be hard to reach, uh, but Motorola did do a decent job at putting some space there, so you can't actually get to all of those numbers. I got dedicated keys for everything, uh, including all your voice search uh, and your regular Android menu and navigation stuff. Go ahead and go back home. We don't have any physical capacitor buttons here. 
um, what roles added to give us the on-screen buttons, which are kind of nice. I got used to them on the Galaxy Nexus. You've got your three sort of done up Motorola style. You've got a back button, your home button, and your multitasking button. Let's see what kind of apps are going to come loaded up on this guy. Uh, Motorola does a pretty nice job about leaving Android pretty much to be Android. Uh, so there are all the uh, apps that come standard. Uh, we've got a uh, vehicle mode as well. You can pick up a vehicle dock to use this as a GPS or even uh, an HD dock to HD out. Uh, there's the smart action I was talking about. You can see all different stuff you can set up and it's kind of fun to go through and play with and um, set all the battery saving uh, options that you'd like. Uh, Motorola does add some pretty cool widgets. Go ahead and take a look at them. We'll go ahead and go there, hop on into widgets. Uh, so these are all standard Google ones. And now we've got circles, which is kind of cool. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, direct messages, direct dials. A lot of these are standard, but with Motorola icons on them. So you can see what all of those are. Uh, so circles, you can sort of swipe down to add stuff there. Uh, you can add more information to really any of these and show different stuff. So this one's showing battery. This one's showing weather. I can add city. And this one is a clock. You can make it show analog or digital. Uh, very handy. Takes up a lot of retail space on the screen, uh, but the circle widget is very nice. And Sprint has added a visual voicemail application here as well. Uh, also very nice. You see NFC capabilities uh, letting you know those are there uh, in addition. Uh, so on the left-hand side of the device, that's where your charging is going to live, and that's where your HDMI out is going to live. Don't get those two ports confused. They look exactly the same. At least close enough to the same, but if you're tired and trying to throw a cord in there, you might have a hard time. Uh, on the top, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, power and lock button for powering, locking, and unlocking your device. A uh, very nicely pronounced volume up and down button. And I love that we've got a dedicated camera button. So camera and shutter button living right there. Nice job for Motorola. Let's see how quickly it activates the camera for the very first time. Go. All right, sort of quick. Take a picture. Pretty quick there as well. Ice cream sandwich, the, by default camera, uh, is pretty zippy. If you want to add new screens, you scroll left. You can add a blank page just like any other Android device, or you can start with a template. I found these templates to be a little too boring. Like They just add some widgets on there and some app shortcuts. Um, so mostly I've avoided them. But if these templates are your thing, at least you have the option. And if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. It's the beauty of choice. I guess that's Android's uh, mantra here. Um, so let's go ahead and bring in what this is replacing, the original Photon. This is the Photon Q, and here is the Photon Sans keyboard. So you can see the difference here. Uh, the Q is definitely a bit of a thicker device. You can see these two. It's like father and son or mother and daughter just saying hello. Haven't seen you in a while. Miss you. How come you never call? How come you never call? Gosh, I'm busy. Leave me alone. At least that's how it went in my house. Uh, so this has been a unboxing and first look at the Motorola Photon Q. Of course, we'll come back at you with a full review as we put this guy through its paces and let it know if it's a worthy Sprint phone to take a place in your pocket. Uh, I am John Rettinger. I am from Techno Buffalo, and I will also see you in the next video. Bye-bye.